don't need any um, notices that lightning has been detected in your area coming across the <laughs> yeah. so you might want to turn your phone off uh, or silence it in some way if you uh, will but anyway it's good to see each of you this morning I tell you what I have thoroughly enjoyed our lectureship this year you know I don't know I guess it's trite to say you know it just seems like this has been the best but it's been well attended and uh, except by some of the speakers I think we've had about nine that had to for some reason bow bow out or something for for whatever reason uh, I don't know if we've got some wimpy preachers or something out here that just <laughs> can't seem to, to to make it but uh but anyway uh, sicknesses do happen and I've been wimpy a time or two myself <laughs> but anyway we've had uh, it's hit them this this uh, week evidently but we're glad you're here and we're glad that everything is going well and talking about that uh, Brother uh, Chuck Webster cannot be here this afternoon at 2.30. He was going to be in room 405 at 2.30. And uh, so what we're going to do is just bring everybody that was that's going to be attending the lectures rather than being in 405, everybody come in here and uh, hear Brother Jerry Sullins at that time in here. And it looks like the topic is uh, uh, really good for that. It says, preach what is needed. And so you'd want to hear that anyway. And so that will be great, and that will take care of, uh, of that uh, particular hour. But you might just keep that in mind and pass it along if you know of someone who is was planning on going to hear Brother Chuck Webster at that time. Before I introduce the speaker, we're going to have Brother Tim Hayes uh, lead us in a song. He preaches for the Logan Martin congregation. He's been there a number of years. And uh, he's also now serving as one of the elders. And Brother Tim had served as an elder even before he came to the Memphis School of Preaching over in North Carolina. And uh, so he's done a, he did a great work at the Memphis School of Preaching, and now they're at Logan Martin. And uh, so I'm grateful that he's serving again as one of the elders. And then after he leads us in a song, Brother Jamie Long, who preaches for the Barnes Creek Congregation in uh, Alabama, uh, he will uh, lead us in prayer. Brother Jamie's a good man. Uh, we've made some trips together. Matter of fact, I've been to Russia with Jamie and been to China and Singapore and Malaysia. I don't know where else. Uh, with Brother Tim, I need to quit hanging around these fellows. They're just getting me a long way from home, evidently. <laughs> but at any rate, uh, the, he's a good man, and we appreciate him being here this week and leading us in our prayer. And then I'll introduce our speaker, Brother Tim. Number 456, 456, let's sing the first and the last. No fears in heaven, no sorrow given, all will be glory. Let us pray. Our kind and most gracious Heavenly Father, once again we bow before Thee this day, thanking Thee for all of the many wonderful blessings that Thou continue to bestow upon us, most especially the spiritual things that we 
are able to have as a result of thy son leaving heaven, coming to this earth, giving his life on the cross, and triumphantly being raised from the grave on the third day so that we could have the remission of sins and all the spiritual blessings that we enjoy. Help us to always be mindful of the spiritual aspect of the life that we are to live here as we await that long-awaited home with the eternity as we have been found faithful. We're thankful for this lectureship, what it has meant this week, for the many lives that have come and, and been a part of it. We're thankful for all the speakers, most especially at this time, Brother Shannon, as he is about to present thy holy word to us. Help us to open our hearts and minds to thy word and make the application as we have need. We pray that thou would forgive us of our sins, and we pray that thou would give us that home with thee in heaven as we have been found faithful, and this is our prayer in Christ's name, amen. <clears throat> Those who know our next speaker will understand <clears throat> what I'm about to say. I feel like I need to move this podium and hang a sheet up over here somewhere. <laughs> Brother John Shannon speaks plainly. I heard, I think it was Gary McDade say one time after a brother had preached, he said, now if you don't understand that, we'll take you back there to the nursery and let somebody explain it to you. In other words, it was that plain. It's my privilege to introduce to us this hour Brother John E. Shannon, Sr. Brother John was born near Memphis, Tennessee a long time ago. He's got it written down here, but I'm not sure if he wants me. It was this century. He's one of seven children brought up with a denominational background, including Methodist, Baptist, and Roman Catholic. Brother Shannon received his education at Bartland in Cordova, Tennessee. He's a former Army paratrooper and Vietnam vet. He's married to Sandra Lott. They have two children, John Jr. and Erica Harris. They're the proud grandparents of five granddaughters and one grandson. In January of 1978, he obeyed the gospel, leaving the Roman Catholic Church and was added to the Lord's Church. And six months later, he preached his first gospel sermon on the blood of Christ. In May of 1997, the North 7th Street Church relocated to what is now known as the James Road Church of Christ. It's the location that was previously known as the Mountain Terrace Church of Christ, those of you that remember back in the day, in the Frazier area of Memphis, Tennessee. He is a graduate of the Memphis School of Preaching and has also completed the graduate program of the same. He's in constant demands for gospel meetings, lectureships, does a lot of tent meetings. And if you've never been to a tent meeting, that's something that sometimes you need to experience in many, many different states. He and Brother Burt Jones, Brother Burt happens to be white, and you might notice Brother Shannon's not, so they wrote a book, here it is in black and white. <laughs> that I'll tell you something about Brother Shannon and also Brother Burt. But he, that's the way he tells it, in black and white. He also, in addition to caring for some children and things of that nature, he's involved in a home doing with that or dealing with that, but he's expanded his ministry to an evangelistic 30-minute television program, and I get to watch that sometimes, I think on Saturday when, when it comes on on the TV screen at my house, uh, called A Message from Heaven, and it can be seen on local channels. And also, he has a program broadcasted on uh, the Gospel Broadcast Network. Brother Shannon is a good gospel preacher, and really that's all that should be, or has to be said about anyone who's preaching the gospel because we're not preaching ourselves, but rather Christ. And in fact, his topic is preaching not ourselves. Looking forward to hearing Brother John come speak to us. Brother. Would you turn to the book of 
2 Corinthians chapter 4, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 1 through 7 will be the text for our study today. 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 7. Paul says, therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, or handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power of God may be, may be the power may be of God and not us. Billy Bland, how much time do I have? Well, I, Billy, you want to put a time on me? Thanks to all of you for being here. We read the text. My assigned subject is, we preach not ourselves. We read the text. Now we're going to attempt to unpack this text. Let's together unpack the text. What do you mean, Brother Sammy? Everything I really need to say is in the text. It's already there. So we're going to unpack it. You ever men ever go do gospel meetings and your wife pack a bag for you? But when you unpack it and look carefully, you'll see something there you didn't see before. And I believe with all my heart that we should unpack these texts because the power is in the text. Paul said, in 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 1, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I have determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and with trembling, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and the power that your faith, get it, brethren, your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. You see that? Now, in this text here, we have four, five points. You who are taking notes, I don't know if your students are required to take notes or not. But when I was in school, we had to take notes. Point number one, verse one. The men for the ministry. That's the first point. That's point number one. 
Point number two, we have the method for ministry. That's verse number two. Are you following me? Point number three, we have the motive for ministry. That's verse number three. Point number four, we have the menace to ministry. That's verse number four. And five through seven, we have the master in ministry. Let's do that again. We have the men for ministry, the method of ministry, the motive for ministry, the menace to ministry, and the master in ministry. Y'all looking like y'all been going to a funeral or something. Boy, I'm making these good outlines here like this. Somebody ought to tip me for this kind of outline. <laughs> Let's unpack the text. Men of ministry, look what Paul said here. Paul speaks of the ministry, the work of the apostles. Paul said, therefore, seeing we, brethren, that's not talking about us. That's talking about the apostles. If you go back to 2 Corinthians 3, 6, Paul said, who also have made us able ministers, that's the apostles, of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kill it, but the Spirit give life. The apostles were the ambassadors. Some of my brethren think they are, but they're not ambassadors of Christ. You and I could never witness as did they. So the apostles, watch it, the ministry of the work of the apostles. Seeing we have this ministry, watch it, we have received mercy. I like that. So we have the ministry, the mercy. All we are saved by the mercy of God. And Paul, Paul said to Timothy that he was thankful to God who had put him in the ministry. He had mercy. Thank God for the mercy. All right. As we have received mercy, he says, he says, we, apostles, faint not. What do you mean? Mighty. Now look at what we've done. We talk about the ministry, we talk about the mercy, and now we talk about mighty. Paul said, we faint not. Are we going to faint? Let's make some application. Are we going to faint? Are we going to give up? Certainly not. I don't know how much time I have left in this world, but I'm not going to let anything stop me. You can't hook me up wrong. And you sure enough can't cow with me. I'm going to preach the word. I'm not fainting. That good? Paul said to the Galatians, when we have therefore opportunity, let us do good to all men. Let us not go weary in well-doing. Oh, that's good. Well, now we look at the method. Paul was serious about some things. Paul was serious about his manner. Amen. He was serious about his morality. He was serious about not misusing the word. And he was serious about the method. Isn't that good? Let's look at it. But I, I like this here. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. What do you mean? Have you, have we, as gospel preachers, teachers, Christians, renounced, given up things of dishonesty? Paul said he did. They did. Then he says, not walking or living in craftiness. What do you mean? We looked at his manner, now his morality, trickery. Paul was honest. Are we honest? You know, it's a dangerous thing for a man to be a gospel preacher in the Lord's church 
and to be crooked in his business transaction. Are you a crook? Sometimes elders are crooked as a crooked as a crooked as a barrel of snakes. Prim preachers are like that. Call yourself a gospel preacher. Telling men how they ought to live. But when we go to Romans 2.19, Paul said, you are a teacher, a guide of the blind, teach others that shouldn't steal. Are you stealing? Are you a thief? Do you lie on your income tax? Uh, do you pay your bills? Boy, you listen well. Boy, maybe I need to come over here often and speak. You folk listen real well. Well, that, that's pretty good, isn't it? Paul said in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse uh, 22, 23, avoiding this, that no man should blame us in the abundance with, uh, which is administered by us, providing for honesty things not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. Brethren, we talk about the Lord knows it. Well, that's right. But uh, we can't see the Lord, not physically. But brethren, we need to be, listen to me, we need to be very careful how we do conduct our business. Are you listening? Not only honest in the sight of God, but in the sight of all men. Oh, boy. They're going to have to tip you for saying amen now. <laughs> Paul was serious about his manner, his morality, and also Paul was, watch it, he, he was serious not in misusing the word. Look at what he says. Nor handling the word of God deceitfully, like our denominational buddies. Here's an example. In Ephesians 2, in verse number 8 through 10, Paul said to the church at Ephesus, he said, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that's not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man shall boast. He said, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus in the good works. Now, my denominational neighbors go right there in Ephesians 2 and verse 8 and say that passage doesn't say anything about baptism. And I often tell them, I say, you know what? You're reading somebody else's mail. That's not your mail. What you need to do is go to Acts 19, hey amen, 1 through 5, and see where Paul came to Ephesus there, and he's finding certain disciples, and he interrogated them, asked them some more questions. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? He said, well, we never even heard of the Holy Spirit. He said, well, then were you baptized? The John baptism. When they heard this, what do you mean? Paul had to reteach these folks. They had received John's baptism after it was a dead ordinance. So they had to do it again. So watch it. They were baptized or immersed according to John's baptism. But when they heard the truth, they were baptized again. Watch it. about 12 men. Is that right? Now, here's my denominational neighbor. Expect my Baptist neighbor to say, well, you don't have to be baptized to be saved. By grace are you saved. That's ignorant, brethren. That's misusing are using the word of God deceitfully. These folks had two baptisms. Amen. And it may be one or two in here uh, that been baptized. But if you listen, the right teaching precedes baptism. If your teaching is wrong, your baptism, you're really not baptized. You just got wet. Is that all right? This is one. This is a good example, brethren, of individuals using the word of God deceitfully. 
Here's another one. And members of the churches of Christ, we really need to teach our people about, you know, First John said, if we confess our faults, if we confess our faults, he is faithful and just to forgive us. So they'll come to you and say, all you have to do is confess your sins to the Lord, he'll forgive you. That's not your mail. That's mail to Christians. God has two laws apart, one for the alien sinners and one for the saints who sin. Brethren, this is a big problem with denominationalism, and it's a big problem with members of the church who are not really skilled in the word. They don't know how to deal with that with denominational people. Brethren, listen here. They, to anything they come up with, it is not theirs, it's ours. Amen. Paul was serious about his message. But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man conscious in the sight of God. I'm still on point number two. When Paul revealed the truth to the people in his day, he recommended himself to the conscience of every man. You see that? Now, Paul said in 2 Corinthians 18, 18, Paul said, for not that, uh, not that he that commended himself is approved, but whom the Lord commended. That good? Oh, boy, that's good. I like this. Paul preached the truth. Brethren, we need to preach the truth regardless. Are you afraid to preach the truth? If you're not going to preach the truth, you need to get out of preaching. You have to know it before you can preach it. Do you have the nerve to do it? A lot of my brethren don't have the nerve. They're scared. They're scared what the saints would say. They are scared what the sinners would say. They are scared what society would say. Let me just do this again. Second Timothy uh, two fifteen, Paul said, "Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the handling of right the word of truth." And Peter said in First Peter four eleven, "If any man speak, let him speak as the arts of God." And Paul said in Acts chapter twenty. And verse number 20 and 27, I have not shunned, declare unto you all the counsel of God. Paul said, I kept nothing back that was profitable unto you. Amen. Now point number three, the motive for ministry. Paul speaks of the power. What do you mean the power? He says, but if our gospel why in the world would you use that, Paul, to the Corinthians? What do you mean, our gospel? I thought it was the gospel of Christ. Well, it's in us. It is. It's the gospel of God. It's the gospel of Christ. It's the apostle doctrine, but it also, watch it, is the apostle gospel here in the sense that it's in them. Now, look, look at Paul speaks of the power. Romans 1, 16, Paul said, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power. What's the power? The preacher. Nope. It's the pastors. Nope. It's the priest. Nope. What do you mean priest? Well, you have the preacher. He's a priest. The pastor's a priest. But all the pew members who are members of the body of Christ, they're priests. But Jesus Christ is our high priest. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 21. He's the high priest of the house of God. And all of us are priests working under the high priest in the house of God. That's it. Now, are you exercising your work as a priest? Brother Shannon, I didn't know I was a priest. You are. 
And how in the world are you going to be a priest and don't offer spiritual sacrifices? I think we need a little more teaching in that line there. But a lot of folks think that the elders and preachers are the only priests and they got to do the work. I got news for you. I can't do your priestly work. Oh, that's good, boy. He talks about the power. Uh, Hebrews 4 and 12, for the word of God is quick, alive, quick and powerful. It's active, quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing, even dividing the son of the soul and spirit of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Brethren, that's why we need to preach the Bible. I don't know what's in your heart, but when I preach the Bible, listen to me, it'll cut you. It'll cut to the intents of the heart. Sometimes I'm preaching like this, say, you were preaching right at me. I said, I must have been doing a good job. I'll pick you out of all those folks that pick on you. That's what the word of God do, Brother Chambers, when you preach the Bible. Amen, somebody. Is that you, Robert Ross? Oh, I'll tell you what. Look at here. Maybe you've all been up here preaching. That's Robert Ross in there. He runs bait fool. Amen. That's a little excursion, but I'll get back to my lesson here. It's the power. It's the power, Brother Sapp. In Acts 15 and verse number 7 through 9, Peter says, or Luke wrote, after there had been much disputing, Peter rose and said, men and brethren, you know how that a good while ago that God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of God and believe it. And God who knoweth the heart of all men, watch it, giving them the Holy Ghost as we. Then he says, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their heart by faith. How you gonna have to peer? How you gonna have a pure heart by faith? Faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. That's why you got to preach the Bible. Can't preach yourself. Get over here now. How much time do I got there, son? Tell me. Oh boy. Oh man, look at that. I don't know why I act like that. Now, brethren, listen to. Me. Listen to, me. I believe politics has its place in society. And I don't want to get on this, but brethren, my calling is not politics. If any of you guys in here, any of you, think that Republican Party or the Democrat Party, to listen to this, listen to me, it's going to save the world. There's something wrong with you. It's, it's really something wrong with you. Because for what I can see, all of them crooked as a bell of snakes. And when they all die, you're going to have to screw them down in the ground. <laughs> and why we want to get down into something, watch it. Brethren, listen. Jesus didn't say go into all the world and preach politics. He said preach the gospel. The gospel is God's power to make society better. To make you better. It's making me, it made me, it's making me better. Amen. That's good, isn't it? So you want your heart purified? What? It's done through the gospel. Now watch this. So uh, that's the power. Paul speaks not only the power, but he speaks of the perishing. What do you mean, perish? He said, but if our gospel be here, it, the gospel, is here to them that are lost. That's the word lost here has to do with perishing. Here we are, feuding, fussing, and a fighting among ourselves. A lot of my black brethren, as well as my white brethren, I think some of us are gone crazy. Have, do you know why we're here? <clears throat> why are we members of the body of Christ? Why are we preaching the gospel? Watch it to make yourself look good. The gospel is God's power to make things better. Ultimately, listen, we need to do what God tells us to do here, but also we want to go to heaven. Brother, let me tell you something. 
he getting out of here? When that table of life turns, you get on Robert Williams, like right here, watch it here. And when it's time for you to get off, you can pray. The doctor can work with you. When it's your time to get off, you're getting off. And you know what? Whether you ready or not, you're going to another side. You right now, all of us in the physical realm. But when we cross over death, we'll be in the metaphysical realm. Watch it. Are you listening to me? That's what it's all about, brethren. Amen. They're lost. Wait a minute. The world is lost, brethren. And sometimes my brethren get all hooked up and wrapped up about who's going to be the president. Well, whoopie do. Well, I don't want a woman, and I sure don't want Donald Trump. Well, it doesn't make any difference with me. Who gets it? Brethren, listen, that's not the spiritual realm. We know civil government is ordained of God. Let them handle it. I think God's got something to do with who's going to be the next president. And I'll tell you this, brother, sometimes God gives us something that we need. Somebody said, we want the best of the two words. Let me tell you something. A lot of times God punishes folks when they don't do right. Brethren, listen to me carefully. The church of our Lord is a spiritual kingdom, and we need to be about spiritual things. And when we get out of line, God is in control. Guess what? Sometimes we need a whooping. You know, you know, brother, uh, uh, God had to carry the, the children of Israel in Babylon captivity to give them a whooping for 70 years. And he cut it. He, he stopped them from sucking eggs on a wholesale scale. <laughs> hey, man, he can stop us. Sometimes we need somebody in like Donald Trump. Well, Brother Shannon, you've gone politics. Well, I, that's a little excursion. Let me get back to the main line here now. I'll leave that alone because I don't want some of, some of these folks here to hurt you when it comes to politics. I don't want anybody. Nope, now leave that alone. Now, well, that's all right. Now, let's look at verse number four. But people are lost. When I look at national television or local, I'm looking at all of these folks in this world who are dying without having forgiveness of sin. When I look on a man, if he's black or white, rich or poor in politics, what I'm saying is this person needs to obey the gospel. How many of you get through with it? Amen. Well, point number two, four here, we have the minister ministry, the minister. Paul speaks of, watch it, the minister, in whom the God of this world, my God, he's a minister. He's a minister to society. Brethren, he's a menace. He's behind all this stuff, and he got a lot of disciples. Some of them are in politics, and some of them are even in religion. He speaks of not only the menace, but maneuvering. What do you mean? Has blinded. What? He, Satan loves to blind people. And you know, when you... Uh, 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 really don't want the truth. You know, you really don't have the love of the truth. God is not going to mess around with you. He'll send you a strong illusion and let you believe a lie and then he'll damn you. So we have Paul speaks of the menace. He speaks of, watch it, maneuvering. Also, he speaks of minds of mankind. He said, whom the God of this world have blinded to mind of men which believe not. How? He's got a lot of things to blind us. Materialism. Denominationalism. Catholicism. Buddhism. Blind folks. Politics. Blind us. Blind the world. Everybody in America. Worrying about who's this and that. And listen, Jesus said, if you die in your sins, where I am, you can't come. You know something, Brother Chambers? The worst thing that could ever happen to a man is not that his wife ran off with another man. Uh -huh. Well, the worst thing that happened to a woman, her husband ran off. No. Well, the worst thing that happened was she got cancer. No. 
Well, I lost my job. I lost my business. That's not the worst thing to happen to you. Jesus said, if you die in your sin, that's the worst thing that could have happened to anybody. Oh, boy. Well, then we have Paul speaks of the menace, the maneuvering, the mind of mankind, and he speaks of the message of the Messiah. Look at it. Look what he said. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, shine unto them. Brethren, we got to put this gospel in. Wait a minute, brethren, let me do this. A lot of times, preachers like to preach to say, and I love a preacher who is smart academically. And I know you're smarter than I am. I know that. And I acknowledge that. I don't know where Keith Mosey is. But Keith Mosey helped me out so much as a student here. He opened up a door of education to me. You know, Brother Shannon, you don't have a Ph.D. and none of that kind of stuff. Well, I know that, you know. But when I was a kid, if, if you had a Ph.D., you didn't want it. Well, why? A Ph.D. was a post hole digger. I didn't want to be no post hole digger. <laughs> Are you listening to me? It's good to have a, make a consummate in academics, even to go to schools and get good education biblically. But brethren, why are you getting it? Are you getting it to for show? And maybe you are, but anyway, listen, when you get through with it, all of your academic ach achievements, Watch it. Won't say one soul. When you get through with it, you're still going to have to preach and teach the gospel of Christ and make it plain to folks to be saved. That's our goal. Now, listen to me now. Amen. Well, then we had a master in ministry. Paul speaks of self. Look what he says. For we preach not ourselves. Self. Get self out of the way. Self-centered, selfishness, uh, get it out. Self. He speaks of the self, but also he speaks of the Savior. Look what he says. For we preach not ourselves, but preach Christ the Lord. What do you mean? Acts chapter 8, verse number 5. Philip went down to a city of Samaria, preached Christ. Wait a minute. He did not preach baptism per se, just baptism. I'm going to preach about it. No. Nope. He didn't preach the church of Christ. No. Nope. He preached Christ. And you can't preach Christ unless you preach the king. You can't preach Christ unless you preach. Amen. About baptism. But he went down and preached Christ. Brethren, we need to get people converted to the Lord Jesus Christ. Wait a minute. Not converted to baptism not converted to the church, but we need to be converted to the Lord Jesus Christ. I am not converted to Garland Elkins, Brother Pete, Brother Moshe, the Memphis School of Preaching. I am converted to Christ. Why? Because he is my Savior. Christ is the Savior. He's the Savior. John 1, 29 Behold the Lamb of God that take away our role, the sin of the world. Yes, Jesus. You see, when you convert to Jesus, when your brethren go to turn in the crazy flips on the communion table, you stay there. When they feud, fuss, and fight and have church splits, you stay with Jesus. Amen. Boy, that's good. Preach Christ. Jesus, he's the Savior. Then Paul says, not only he speaks of self and the Savior, but he speaks as servant. He says, and I will save your servant for Jesus' sake. Oh, boy, that's good. Paul said, but we have this sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raised the dead. Oh, 
God, Eric, I look at you coming up here, I start to knock you down. <laughs> What's he doing up here? Coming up here, stopping me. Well, that's good, isn't it? I think I can do it up here. It would have been easy for Paul to have built a fan club to take advantage of weak-minded people. You got a lot of brethren, black and white, they want fan clubs. They got fan clubs. They follow them. Well, this preacher boy, I'm, I'm going to leave and go somewhere else. What do you do? Fan club. Who ever heard of that? Well, Paul speaks of, watch it, the command to the light. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. As God brought light in the material creation, he used light to lighten things up. Genesis chapter 1, 3 to 5. Paul speaks of uh, the comprehending of light has shown in our heart to give the light of the knowledge of, our, of the glory of God. If the truth had not been revealed to the apostles, then the whole world would be in darkness not knowing what to do to have remission of sin. Thank God for that. Well, then he says the countenance of Christ in the face of Jesus Christ. Then Paul speaks of the scripture as the treasure. Paul said, but we have this treasure, watch it, this treasure, this scripture, what? in earthen vessels. So he talks about the scripture and he talks about the servants as earthly vessels. The scriptures, watch it, that's the treasure. The earthen vessels were the apostles. Brethren, at that time, the inspired word was in the inspired meaning. Now the inspired word is in the inspired book. Brethren, there are any, there aren't any inspired men anywhere. In the churches of Christ, in denominationalism, in anything else. They're all gone. And the apostles were for were to be forever the teachers of the world. And their message that they received from the Holy Spirit, watch it, watch it. Well, they will be teachers of the world forever, and their message is infallible. Here it is, here it is, right here. All you have to do is preach it. You can't add to it or take it away from it. Amen. And the earth investors here is the service. That all right? The idea of light in earth investors is best illustrated in the record of the lamp and the pictures of Gideon's day. Judges chapter 7, 8 through 12. You know that? It wasn't in it wasn't the, 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 the earth investors. It was the light that was in the picture. It ain't us, it's the gospel that we preach. If the breaking of the vessels, in breaking of the vessels, the light was revealed. God revealed the gospel by the apostles, watch it, which is the source of scripture, that the excellence of the power of God may be, the excellence of the power may be of God and not ourselves. That's the lesson that we talked about now if we went over we talked about the, the mean in ministry we talk about the method the motive the menace and the master who is the messiah jesus christ came to this world died for the sins of the world purchased the church with his own blood had it he was resurrected from the grave Mark chapter 9, 9, 16, verse number 9, early on the first day of the week, he was resurrected, right? He ascended back to heaven. The Holy Spirit came. First gospel sermon was preached. Faith, repentance, confession, baptism into Christ for the mission of sin, and live a faithful and a godly life. I thank you so very kindly. Brother Blaine.
You notice I sat there until he invited me to come up there then. <laughs> Man telling me to be like Christ and then tell me he's going to knock me down for coming <laughs> up there. <laughs> uh, well, it's not my first rodeo, Brother John. I've been knocked down before. So we just keep on keeping on. You know, Brother John, you, you've got a Ph.D., not that post hole digger, but you plowed, hold, and dug to get through the school, didn't you? Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, you can use that. You like the rabbit hunt, don't you? Yes, sir. You got any beagles? No, I've got a mastiff. Oh, wow. Have a mastiff. Oh, no, I was going to say, you, you you got something against those rabbits, evidently. <laughs> uh, a dog like that. But uh, <clears throat> what I was going to say is, Brother John, he's a, he's a good rabbit hunter. I like to go rabbit hunting sometime with him because I like to rabbit hunt. And, and I've known people to have beagles. My grandfather used to raise beagles. Sometimes you can put papers on a dog, you know that? But it won't make him hunt. That's right. You can put papers on a preacher and it won't make him preach. That's right. And so we appreciate the fact that the gospel is the power of God into salvation. And we're grateful Brother John preaches it. You know, he said before he jumped out of airplanes, he was tall as Jim Dearman. <laughs> I remember you saying that one time. But he may be uh, not quite as tall as Brother Jim, but both he and Jim preach the same message, and they preach a powerful message, and it's the gospel. And so good to have fun with brethren, but I tell you what, when it gets down to the gospel, I serious business, isn't it? And he, so we appreciate so very much, Brother John, being in here, and uh, you're dismissed.